So this is the second video I'll be doing on osteoarthritis of the hip and the knee. Um, and today I'll be talking about um, what the risk factors are for getting arthritis. Um, and I'll also be talking about how it's diagnosed. So, and then the next video I'll be talking about the range of treatment options available for those with um, osteoarthritis. So what are the risk factors for it? So we talk about modifiable and non-modifiable risk factors. Um, and if we take non-modifiable ones, they're the ones that you can't really change. So things like age, um, you know, we know that the older you get, the more at risk you are of, um, of getting arthritis um, because the joint changes and the cartilage thins in the joint. Um, and although the actual painful structure is not the cartilage itself, it's the structures around it, when the joint changes, some of these pain sensitive structures like the muscles and ligaments and the joint capsule, they become very uh, sore and, and sensitive. Um, also gender, so we know that um, OA is a little bit more prevalent in women. Um, and in terms of the hip and the knee, um, men tend to, um, it's increased um, in slightly in the men and with knee it's uh, increased slightly in the women um, as well as uh, women tend to get more hand OA. Um, and the other things that you can't really modify are your genes. So um, again, that your genetic, um, you might have a bit of a genetic predisposition. However, the good news is that there's lots of modifiable factors. So although these are the non-modifiable ones, the, the factors you can change can, um, if you address those, they can not only reduce symptoms, but often um, the symptoms can, can go away as well, which is really uh, positive. So these modifiable risk factors are lots. So we look at, um, obviously the joint changes are one thing, but um, we look at uh, other things you can change. So being overweight is a, is a risk factor. Um, we know that muscle weakness is a risk factor, and we know that um, doing either too much exercise or too little uh, exercise, so if you're inactive, can also be a risk factor. Um, we look at uh, other lifestyle things like stress and depression, and also um, uh, quite a big one is sometimes uh, fear about that joint, fear of um, structural change and fear of getting older, and therefore you tend to do it a little bit less, and that also has a profound um, impact on pain and disability. But the good news is that many of these factors can be changed um, with the right guidance and support. So how is OA diagnosed? Well, if your health practitioner um, assesses your knee or your hip and suspects there may be some sort of structural changes uh, that lead further investigation, they may refer you for an x-ray. And the x-ray can show um, these structural changes, so joint narrowing, you know, thinning of the cartilage and narrowing of that joint space. It also shows up sort of other structural changes within the joint. Um, However, what the x-ray won't show you is how much pain you're in. So an, an x-ray is unable to detect which structures around that joint um, are painful. So treatment options are often guided um, by the severity of someone's symptoms. And in the next video, I'll be talking about the range of treatment options out there for um, hip and, and knee OA, their effectiveness um, and um, the range of different treatment options out there and talk about the sort of pros and cons of, of each one.